Welcome to Wanic Science. This video is about macromolecules. A macromolecule is a large molecule made up of smaller pieces or building units that we're going to call monomers. Mono, of course, meaning one. So it's kind of like Legos. We might have one piece and we can connect it with another one. And chemically bonding these two together, extracting the water from in between, we now have two monomers stuck together. Of course, we can do this multiple times over to make something larger called a polymer or a macromolecule. And there are four major macromolecules for which we're interested in. One is called a carbohydrate. The second are called lipids. The third is called proteins. And the last are nucleic acids. You might find it most useful to prepare a data table of the following headings. So pause the video, go ahead and sketch this table out, make it big, a full page. Alright, you ready to go? Let's start with carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are used in the body for short-term energy storage, and they're usually shaped, or we think of them anyway, kind of as these regular hexagon shapes. They're made up of monosaccharides, that's the monomer. And the structure, again, is a hexagon shape, and they have about, they store about four kilocalories per gram. So it's, there are three types of carbohydrates that we're interested in. There's a monosaccharide, which is just one unit of these carbohydrates, as you can see here. Examples of that include glucose, fructose, galactose, and deoxyribose. Notice that each one of these has an O-S-E ending. And that's a chemical, a chemist way of telling you that these are, are carbohydrates, specifically sugars. Okay, the second one is a disaccharide. So you take two monosaccharides and stick them together and you get a disaccharide. And these are simple sugars. Oftentimes, what we think of like sucrose and lactose. Sucrose is the sugar that you might put on your breakfast cereals or things like that. Um, and then lactose, of course, is the sugar found in milk. But what if you grouped bigger chains together? Well, a polysaccharide, which is our third variety, is just really long chains of monosaccharides linked together. And we often call these complex carbohydrates. And these include things like starches and glycogen and cellulose. These are all things that uh, store lots of energy. The second major macromolecule are, are lipids. If carbohydrates are short-term energy storage, then lipids are long-term energy storage. And they're made from little units called fatty acids. So that's the monomer. And their structures are rather long chains. And these contain 9 kilocalories per gram. So over double the amount of energy than carbohydrates. Okay, so we've got two major types of fatty acids. You've got saturated fatty acids and unsaturated fatty acids. And if you're looking at these, you might say, well, what's the big difference? They look the same until you get to the end and you see an unsaturated fatty acid has a double bond stuck in the, uh, in the middle there, which means it has fewer actual chemical bonds. Fewer bonds means f less energy stored in the molecule. Because they're unsaturated, they often have a slightly bent-shaped chain, and they store less energy. These are often considered healthier fatty acids. The saturated fatty acids, because they are completely filled with all the chemical bonds they can, they've maximized the number of chemical bonds they have, they tend to be straight chains and have store higher amounts of energy. So examples of lipids then include fats and oils, waxes. Um, some of these things you might not recognize yet, like phospholipids, steroid hormones, and triglycerides. What do these fatty acids do? Well, your body uses these, and I want to make sure you understand that uh, in our modern world, we often think of fat as a bad thing, but in biological systems, fat is a really useful thing. For example, it provides long-term energy storage, or it protects against heat loss, so it's a good insulator. Um, it might help against physical shock or water loss, uh, Chemical hormones are made from f these fats and lipids. Even major parts of cell membranes are made from fats. So realize then that this is a useful uh, building material and energy storage material. The problem with fats isn't that they store energy. It's usually that we consume too much of them. The third major 
macromolecule used in biology is proteins. And proteins, I want you to think of them as building blocks for the body. And this big idea is more like growth and development. So what are they made out of? Their monomers are amino acids, for which there are 20 different kinds. Their structure here is rather globular. Really simply saying, it doesn't have a nice structural shape. It's usually just this big blob. And of course, the amount of energy they contain is about 4 kilocalories per gram, so about the same as a carbohydrate. One of the th key things about uh, proteins that you should be able to recognize right away is that one of the key ingredients is nitrogen, as you can see right here. So, if this is an amino acid, then groups of amino acids put together make up a protein. As you can see, it's rather blob-shaped. Examples of a lot of common proteins you'll think of might be keratin, the protein used in making your hair and fingernails, collagen, which is a protein that helps uh, give your skin elasticity, and hemoglobin, which is a key component to your blood. Notice that a lot of proteins have an IN ending, often designating them as proteins. So what do proteins do? What are they good for? Oh gosh, you use them for all kinds of things like storing, uh, transport, uh, they're good for regulating things, um, important for movement, muscles are a key component, uh, a key component of your muscles is protein. Uh, they're used for structural components, even enzymes are made out of proteins. So proteins become really important things in your body. But the last one are called nucleic acid, and these things store genetic information. This is an inheritance idea. So they're made up of long chains of monomers called nucleotides. Examples include DNA or RNA, even mitochondrial DNA. Here we have a nucleotide, and it's got several little pieces, like a phosphate group, a little sugar piece in the middle, a nitrogen base on the end. That's a nucleotide. But because it's a single nucleotide doesn't do much, when we put it together with other nucleotides, we can make a structure of DNA. Notice, though, that there are no energy or kilograms uh, values listed for nucleic acids. Why? Well, because nucleic acids are better used, not necessarily for energy, although they can be used for energy, but they're better used for storing genetic information. In other words, the body prefers to save these for more important uh, use. Okay, time for your reflection. Based on what you've learned in this video so far, respond to the following two questions in your notebook.